as we begin our, our study, we are going to see the, the impact of miracles. You know, I often say that uh, the Bible says that miracles, signs, and wonders will follow those who believe. So if, if, if the scripture said that, then uh, the miracle signs and wonders, they are, they're, they're following us. I mean, we, we may not be sensitized to the point of, of acknowledging that they exist, but they really exist. They really exist. If you uh, took time, if you took time to, to identify them, you will find out that they are active every day in our lives. Uh, we just don't call them miracles, signs, and wonders. We come up with other things that discount what God is doing. So I want you to pay very close attention uh, this, this, this evening as we break open, uh, the, break open the scriptures because you are, you're going to quickly be introduced to miracle signs and wonders. And, and we are going to see here, you, you think you learned about persecution in the church, uh, over the church, that uh, to this evening study, you're going to see persecution of the believers at an all-time high. Uh, these, these disciples, you know, if you, if you took some time to learn about these disciples, uh, these disciples, they were common everyday individuals, common everyday individuals. And their, their claim for Jesus Christ being who he claimed to be, they did not waver. They did not waver. And, and many tried to uh, convince them that what they were believing, what they were telling people was a fairy tale. But not one of them ever budge. Did you know that with the exception of, with the exception of, of we call him uh, uh, John the Revelator. Uh, he wrote the book of Revelations. With the exception of him, all of the other disciples were killed because of the message of Jesus Christ. Now you would think that if, if Christ's message was partially true, that, or, or par partially false, I should say, that one of them would have broken one of them would say, well, you know, he, he called us all together and he told us, you know, if it, gets too, if, it, if it gets too heated, you can just give up. You know, you can just give up completely. But not one of them uh, could break him. Uh, you know, there were, uh, some of them were crucified upside down. Uh, uh, one of them was put in, uh, just dropped in a, a, a a, a large container of oil, hot oil, hot grease. Uh, I mean, they they went down and they still believe, they still believe it did not break them. And that has to be a, a, a message of encouragement to someone this evening that in the midst of persecution, like none other, it actually made them stronger, made them stronger than they than they ever was. So, in our in our reading of the scripture, you're going to have my son if he would uh, uh, turn turn with us to the book of Acts. And again, there's there's so much here that I want to share this evening. But so I'm see if we can kind of pace ourselves to uh, to see if we can get through 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 this chapter, uh, beginning beginning at at chapter. Uh, 8 verse 1 of the book of Acts, those of you just tune in from the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1. I wanted to read that and then we'll, we'll pause, pause because I have something I want to share and then we'll, 
will continue on. Go ahead, son. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for but Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Okay, you can you can uh, you can stop right there. Um, um, uh, another translation, King James says, and and Saul was consenting unto his death, and that time. That was, there were great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. A few things I want to note there. Someone would turn uh, with me to... Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 and 15. And, uh, and this was written after uh, Saul, who became Paul. It was after he had become converted. I want you to hear his own words. And, and what, we just, what we just read, it, it, it cross-reference is a cross-reference to his testimony about Christ. Can someone turn there? First Timothy chapter one, verses uh, 13 through 15. Anyone just turn your mic on and read it if you could. First Timothy chapter one, verses 13 through 15. Yes, ma'am. Who was, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our God was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, another translation, he, he says that he's the chief among all sinners. Now, you have to think about that when a man makes a statement like that, that I am the chief among all sinners. He is in essence saying that uh, that he was top of the he was on the top of the list. When you look at all of the sinners in this world, he claimed to be the chief. He came to be the chief among them, and 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 I only make reference to that because it was under his directions. It was under his order that the people of God be persecuted. Now, I'll read, I want you to read uh, verse two again, Jared. Let's see, verse. look at verse two again. Read that very slowly. Godly men buried and mourned deeply for him. Godly men carried Stephen and made great uh, lamentations over they they basically they uh they they took his body and they uh they they uh they buried him they they did not fear being seen uh as a follower but they recognized that he needed a a, a proper burial and they they uh, they they buried they buried him but what was a what was about to take place is a uh, persecution at an all time high persecution at, at an all time high uh the 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 leaders of the temple now you know you you heard in 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 first 
First Timothy out of Paul's own mouth, Paul maintained that he was ignorant to the things of God, that, that what he did to, uh, to persecute the church, he did it out of ignorance. He did it out of great ignorance in his time of, pers uh, in his time of persecuting, persecuting the church. But it was, it was the mission and the, and the goal of those in the temple that Paul was a part of. Their goal was to stamp out and get, a, get rid of the Christian faith, those that belong to the way. The goal was to get rid of it and clear it up and, and, uh, and do away with it completely. And so one way of, one way of, of being able to suppress the message of God was to uh, capture them and put them in um, in, in 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 prison. Uh, in, in in verse verse three, it says, "As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hauling men and women, uh, and committed them to prison." This is this is Paul himself. This is the one that. When they, when they stoned them, when they killed Stephen, this is the one that those that were doing the execution and the killing of Stephen, they threw their coats at the feet of Saul. So this is Saul himself. It's almost like he was playing the role of an executionist to the Christian, to, to those of the, of, the Christian, of the Christian faith. You see, sometimes we, we don't recognize how much the church has gone through. You know, in this time of a, a pandemic that we're in right now, where many churches aren't meeting as we are accustomed, accustomed to meeting, you'll wonder, well, will the church survive? Well, my brother, my sister, if the church survived 2,000 years ago under this manner of persecution, certainly, the church will survive during this time of uh, during this time of, of pandemic. Let us let us let us move on. Move on, son. Read verse four for us, please. You got the you you reading NIV, son. Yeah. What translation you're reading? NIV. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Verse verse four. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Okay. Okay. Start right there. Uh, because of the persecution, uh, the believers were scattered abroad. They were, uh, they, were, they were separated. And we know you would think that when you separate people from their support system, when you separate people from their base, that they will lose power. They would no longer be effective when you split them up because they're not there. But these believers, you know, oftentimes what God meant for evil, what, what the enemy meant for evil, I should say, God turns it around for his good. So when they scattered them abroad, actually, they help the spreading of the gospel message. They, they help the gospel message to, to, uh, to be spread. Read that, read that one more time, please. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in some Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with, streak, with shrieks and pure spirits came out of many, and many who paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was a great joy in that city. You know, it it it, it is amazing uh, when the the word of God represents light, and the Bible teaches that that light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place. So it's just like you know, in 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 our homes when we walk in in the home and it's dark, 
the minute we hit the light switch, what happens? The darkness disappears. Well, the word of God serves the same purpose that when the light of the word of God goes forth, that the evil spirits, uh, evil spirits have to go. You know, some of the greatest things we can do to come against evil spirits is to proclaim and begin to speak the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. And, and, and so, so many of these unbelievers that, that, uh, that the people of God were ministering to, many of them were, um, well, were uh, Satan worshipers. Yeah, many of them were involved in all types of sorcery. But, but when the word of God went forward, uh, the evil spirits had to come out. Because once you invite the word of God in, light and darkness cannot dwell in the same, the same place. So the spirits have to, the, the spirit have to come, come out of them. The, the, the scripture says when we, when we share the gospel to individuals, share the gospel of love with individuals, that we are in, we are in essence saving um, individuals from a multitude of sin. If, if you, you, you stop the men in the beginning and think about where you would be now had it not been for the Lord, where, where would you be now had it not been for the Lord? You know, it's an awful thing to think of the things that we could be in and involved in even this very hour had it not been for the Lord. We would probably be somewhere heavily engaged in something that is not productive for our life. So thank God, thank God, thank God uh, for, uh, for, for Jesus. And so, uh, and so in verse 18, um, verse 18, it says, and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles hands, that the Holy Ghost was given and he ordered and he offered them money. Now, now, now we do know, we do know that, that, um, that we cannot buy healing with money. We cannot buy salvation with money. We cannot buy uh, the love of God uh, with uh, money. Only thing we can do is, you know, submit and commit ourselves uh, to the Lord, submit and commit ourselves to the Lord completely. So as all of the uh, this persecution and everything was taking place and they were scattered abroad, they became very productive in sharing the message of Jesus Christ. And many, many were saved, many were healed, many that were lame, they were, they were delivered in the midst of persecution. It's, it's, been, it's been proven again and again and again that when the, when the church historically has been under the greatest pressure, it it was the most productive. The greatest pressure, it was under, it was most productive. Now let's analyze that for, um, for, for a minute. You're under the greatest pressure, persecution. You've been scattered abroad, but more productive than you were when you weren't under it. Could it, could it be that when we are under great persecution that uh, and great trials and tribulations that we depend on god more than we depend on him when everything is going great for us um i think there's a lot to be there's a lot to be said uh concerning that I can tell you, I call it my dark years back in the early, early 90s that I went through some things that I thought I would never experience in my life. Felt I did nothing to deserve it, but it was something that I had to, I had to go through it. And, um, and I think God did more 
in my life during those in those few, few years that uh, it, it, it's almost like in those few years, God did 10 and 20 years of, of stuff in my life in terms of molding me, making me, and shaping me into a vessel fit for uh, the master's use. So again, we see the church under attack. We see the church being split up and scattered abroad. But people are getting saved all across the country. Everywhere that these apostles went, people were uh, giving their lives to Jesus Christ. People were being healed and, and delivered and set free. Evil spirits were being cast out of folks, all because they were scattered abroad. When they were scattered abroad, what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around for good. Somebody need to say amen and amen and amen. Uh, look at verse, look at verse, uh, let me go back to verse 8. Uh, Jerry, read verse 8. Uh, very, it's a short verse. Verse 8. So, so there was a great joy in that city. Okay, what, what created, what created this joy? You know, what do you think created this, uh, this type of joy? Someone help me out. What do you think created this type of joy? People are getting saved and people, people are getting healed. People are getting saved, people are getting healed. People were getting delivered. They weren't focusing, the, 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 the people of God, they were not focusing on the fact that they've been scattered abroad and separated uh, from their Christian brothers and sisters. They were really focusing on the fact that God was using them in a, in a, in a mighty way. You know, it, it, it is an honor uh, to be used by God. It is an honor to know that, that you are an instrument that God plays. You are an instrument that God plays and God uses uh, uh, throughout, throughout this earth. And these believers were, uh, were, were so excited. Uh, look at verse, verse uh, uh, Acts uh, verse, verse 9, and there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself, that he himself was some great person. And so we, 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 we learn in, in the scriptures that the the, the scripture never really give us um, uh, proof that uh, that this particular Simon, this is not uh, Simon, this is not Simon Peter here, but that this particular one that he had ever given his life to to the Lord. But he he concludes in this chapter by asking for prayer, and I I think that is very. That, that 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 is that is very significant in life. I want to one. I just made note of verse twelve that I want to highlight. But 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 when they believed Philip's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. You see here what happened a because of this great move that that it started with persecution it it started with the uh, with the church being under a great attack that's where it all sort of started at it ended up with a a, a, a marvelous move of God where people were saved and baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, now, uh, Simon in the scriptures, he 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 went through this, 
He went through the process, but he felt as if the process, the process that he went through, he felt as if he needed to pay for that. And that was a, that, that became a, a, a great problem. Jared, I want you to read verses 14 and 14 and 15. You read verses 14 and 15. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them, they had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, there, there is something about um, being empowered. You know, we can, uh, we can profess to be believers, but, you know, in order to live in this world and resist uh, all manner of evil that come your way, you need the power of the Holy Spirit of God. You need the power of the Holy Spirit of God just to forgive uh, some wicked individuals in this earth. There are, there are some bad people uh, in this earth. Uh, you know, I have, I have come, become acquainted with many of them uh, that, are, uh, that are real evil and seek to hurt us. And if you are not careful, hatred can build up in you about them. And so you need the power of the Holy Spirit of God to forgive individuals that have that that is out to hurt you and do all manner of evil against you. So you have to pray for them. And, and what encourages us to pray for our enemy is the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, when when people do evil to you, and that and that all and all you can all you can think of is to re retaliate and uh, and come uh, and come against them, then then perhaps you've not been empowered uh, with the with the Holy Spirit of God. I I often like to ask God, empower me, empower me, so that I can go forth being your representative in every situation that I might that I might face. But one thing that the apostles knew that if they weren't empowered with the Holy Spirit of God, they would not have the power to resist and to and to uh, come against the persecution that they would face. And so the first thing that those apostles did when they arrived there, they laid their hands on them, and, and, and spoke over them to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Be, with, be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. We need continuous power, people of God, to live this Christian life. This is not a, this is a spiritual life. You must live it being empowered with the Holy Spirit of God. This, we're not talking living a natural life. We're talking how does a natural man live a spiritual life? We live a spiritual life by being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, by being filled continuously with the Holy Spirit of God. Anyone got any thoughts? Go right ahead, please. To add, to piggyback on what you were saying, um, um, you're absolutely right about, um, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, when, you, when you study it even more, it tells you that the reason why Peter um, and, and I think it was, it was James, was it Peter and James that had to come? Correct? Say that again, my brother. It was who, who, who came and gave him, um, um, it was Peter who laid hands on him? Yeah. Peter and who? And John. So it's yeah. Peter and John. Um, when you study it out, you see that... Um, the reason why, uh, you know, besides the laying of hands is that 
they had to come because the 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 the, the, the Jewish uh, people did not get along with the Sumerians. Mm-hmm. And they was not convinced that they were filled with the Holy Spirit until Peter and John came. So when when you study it out, it, it's a twofold thing that you know Peter and John knew that. You know, there was still a, 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 a mumbling and, 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 and um, some type of uh, discord amongst amongst them, you know, because they were Samaritans. So that, just to add to what you're saying, yes, they, um, you know, they came and they laid hands on them. But it was a, a, another reason why, because the Jews didn't want to accept them for being a part of the body. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it... Uh, uh, Throughout this, and, and we'll we'll be covering uh, this in a few weeks, where where the the Jews, uh, the Christian Jews, felt like the gospel message was exclusive to them. It was for them. It was not to be shared with uh, the Samaritans. Uh, it was not to be shared with those of other nationalities, of other cultures. And so the Lord had to spend some time with the disciples to make sure that his very own disciples, apostles, understood very clearly that the gospel message is a message for all mankind, all over, all over, all over the world. Uh, Let us... uh, let us go on. Wanted to uh, wanted to touch on uh, yeah verse 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 eighteen. Uh, it says that and uh, and when Simon saw that uh, that through the laying on of the apostles' hands that the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. He offered them money. Obviously, uh, he was a you know, very, very wealthy person uh, that felt like, uh, you know, when you do something, you do a miracle, you do something very powerful that you should be uh, uh, compensated for. And so, uh, he was around and following around those that practice sorcery and involved in magic and things of that. When they do different magical things, they would get uh, they would get some kind of compensation. So he uh, con- he continued on in that. Jerry, want you to uh, uh, pick up right at uh, verse nineteen. And said, give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, continue on. Peter answered, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. After they had further proclaimed the word of the Lord and testified about Jesus, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. Amen. So, you know, as you can see here, um, there is uh, there is no indication that Simon really surrendered himself uh, to the Lord, even after witnessing all that he witnessed. But but you have to appreciate him. Uh, at the end, asking the apostles to remember him in prayer, to remember him in prayer. You know, there are there are times that you can share the salvation message to many, 
and they will not respond. But the Apostle Paul writes, I believe it, believe it's in, uh, in 1 Corinthians. He says, uh, he says I, have, I have planted, Apollos have watered, but it's God that giveth the increase. Uh, I, I want to believe that, uh, that, that somewhere in Simon's life, uh, he finally... Uh, surrendered himself to the Lord because he could have he could have easily have said he went through all of the methods with them, but at the end they could see that it didn't take. They they could see real clearly that he did not understand what he was doing, and 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 they made it very very clear when after going through the all of the motions that he wanted to compensate them for. All that they've done, they knew that it was he was not representing the spirit of the, the spirit of God. So, what we can conclude uh, in our in our study this evening in chapter eight is that oftentimes persecution can become your friend. That 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 persecution can actually elevate the move of God like never before. That, that, that persecution, why oftentimes we look at it because many of us are going through, going through these difficult times, we, we view it as being something extremely negative, but perhaps in the midst of our trials, our tribulation, our pandemics, our limited uh, uh, capability, our limited finances and things like that. Perhaps it is in those uh, times and experiencing those times is when we are being set up to allow God to do his greatest work in our life. God did more in the life of the church during persecution than, be, than when they were not being persecuted. And so if God does more in the life of the church in persecution, then whatever rough situations we are dealing with today, we need, to, we need to embrace them and continue to look for the hand of God at work in our life. Any final thoughts, any final obser ob observations you go Go right ahead, please. Any final thoughts? Just unmute your unmute yourself, please. Go ahead. Go ahead, my brother. So um I, I really in, enjoyed this uh chapter. Um because you you know you you learn about a person named Simon, the sorcerer who um who wanted to pay for the Holy Ghost. You know he he got a little beside himself and uh he saw what uh Peter and John was doing. He said I, I want to do this too. Um, we one would say he may have been still you know uh, young in his faith and not um not yet understanding, you know, uh, what the Holy, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit was. Um, when he asked uh, Peter to, you know, pray that what he just said um, doesn't come upon him, some of the theologians don't know if he was being sarcastic or not. Um, but it, it, it just goes to Galatians where it says, you know, the, the fruit of the Spirit. And, and, and that's something that we, we, we must... Um, remember that as Christians, especially new Christians in Christ, that, you know, we don't, we don't grow overnight. This is, this is something that, you know, that that's ongoing. And, you know, when you hear the words, uh, love, joy, peace, uh, long suffering, kindness, and the one I like the most is self-control. These are things that have to develop, not overnight. And, you know, God bless, you know, Simon, you know, he, he, he saw a way to make some more money. You know, I remember he was a sorcerer, so he, hey, I, I, 
you know, they, they, this seemed like a good way to make some money, man. So, you know, I, I, I want some of that. Let me, let me, let me pay, let me pay you to, to, you know, you touch me and now I can go around and I can start, you know, touching, you know, other people also. But it, it, it just, you know, shows you how, how sometimes we can be um, young in our faith and, and, and anointing is something that, you know, you, you can't pay for, you know, it, it's something that is God given. So it, it just, you know, you know, those who are on the line, if you can go back and reread that, you, you can see the, the, the humor in it that, you know, uh, uh, Simon saw a way to make some, some, some money. Um, but um, ultimately it is more about the maturing of your faith. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. And also, um, you know, it shows, blatantly shows, you know, God can see what's in our hearts. And definitely, you know, God saw what was in his heart and God cannot be deceived. So even though what we say or do, it all depends on really what's in our heart, because that's what God take into consideration or what's in our heart. Amen. Beautiful. Anyone else? Go right ahead. Any other thoughts? Amen. Amen. Well, that's Acts chapter, again, that's Acts chapter eight. Uh, next week, we will, uh, we will, we will jump into Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter nine. Um, do want to, uh, before we close out in, in prayer, uh, do want to, uh, in, in, invite you all, if you're, uh, if, if your schedule would, uh, will, uh, will permit, do want to in, invite you all to our, uh, our annual 9-11, our annual 9-11 gathering. And, uh, it's, it's certainly going to be, a going to be a great, uh, great opportunity, you know, for the, for the, for the church to actually, uh, come, come together. It's uh, it, it actually takes place this coming this coming Friday is our uh, is our tenth annual gathering of pastors and uh, pastors and churches and it's it's going to be a virtual virtual gathering but it's this this Friday evening at seven o'clock uh, seven o'clock p.m. Uh, we're expecting uh, roughly about 100 pastors and leaders uh, to connect with us on, uh, on, on Zoom for a very serious time of prayer. The, the ultimate purpose of this gathering is, is not to preach to each other, but to call upon the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in the, in the midst of, of the time that we're in right now, believe God wants to continue to hear from the church and his leaders uh, challenging challenging us as we uh, embrace uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, the Lord God says that he'll forgive our sins and he'll heal our land. And so we are, uh, we're coming together for a couple of hours this, this uh, Friday evening. Again, we'll send the link out, the Zoom link out to the entire uh, church family and to hundreds of others to, uh, to tune in uh, with us. Uh, some, some 10 years ago, I was in a uh, pastor's conference in Orlando and the, uh, Lord, while I was at that conference in Orlando, the Lord told me that when I got back here to South Florida to pull together uh, churches throughout South Florida to come and to pray. And it, this was like, you know, 9-11 had already passed, but it appeared that God wanted to hear from the churches as a whole, but we we drop our denominational ties and we come together for the main reason to call upon the name of the Lord and seek the Lord's face. So anyway, if you've ever been involved in uh, 
just a Holy Ghost meeting where there are just continuous prayers. We want to encourage you to, 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 to join. We have a couple of uh, people in our ministry that I'm hoping, hoping uh, uh, Pastor Eric would be available. I'd love for him uh, to do a prayer uh, if, uh, if his schedule, schedule would, would allow and um and we have several others that will be participating with us uh, again that's this friday at seven this friday at 7 p.m again this is the uh, uh the gathering of pastors churches and leaders all across all across south, south florida again want to continue to encourage us all so that we would uh continue to pray one for another the Bible says that uh, th that is a calling on our life. There is actually a command on our lives that we should pray one for pray one for another, and um, and because you know while things may be going very well for you today, uh, you know you know tomorrow you may go into another season, and would would hope that the brothers and sisters you know across this country. Are keeping keeping you in 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 prayer. So we want to we want to continue to do that. Uh, if you are you're able to join us at six thirty every morning for for prayer, as we as we pray over the church and the and the people of God, uh, we're still trying to hit our uh, one hundred. My favorite my favorite Bible verses uh, for those of you and and. All of you on the line here have submitted, have submitted them, but but perhaps uh, there are some folks that you know that maybe you can convince them to uh, to send one in. We're hoping to get 100. We're trusting God, I should say, to get 100 of these, and then we are going to uh, uh, put them on this particular site that would allow thousands of uh, thousands of people to listen to. The word of God. Listen to the word of God. You know, this thing right now is close to about 22, 23 minutes. You know, by the time we finish with it, you know, we'll be like 30, 40 minutes of just continuous listening to the uh, to the word of God. I think it's going to really be very powerful. It's very powerful right now because just to sit there and go through the whole thing, it takes some time, but you're getting a lot of word in your in your spirit so would appreciate it if you're able to uh to, to help us help us out by putting uh putting a word putting a word or two out there amen we're gonna we're gonna close out in um in prayer for the evening uh, not sure if i forgot uh anything i i do believe this coming sunday um we'll be rolling out our uh our praise our praise team uh, a few of them will be coming uh, to assist us in uh, in our praise and in our praise and worship. I do believe we are scheduled to see that happen uh, this coming this coming Sunday. We are uh, we're doing a whole uh, a whole whole sermon sermon series about the importance of taking a stand. Taking a stand. You you got to stand for something. You can't be you just can't straddle the fence, you know. The even the Lord says, you know, He said, if you're gonna be lukewarm. I'd rather that you just be cold, uh, because the the Lord is looking for uh, the people of God, especially during this era that we're in right now. We got to take a stand. We got to let the world know that God is still in control, and when everything is said and done. When everything is said and done, we will all learn that God was doing a great thing. Although we don't understand it, although we've been, we, we have felt like we've been victims, that it's all going to work out for our good. If our, if our latter days are going to be greater than our former days, people of God, we need to keep looking up. You know why? Why do you think we need to keep looking up? Can somebody help me in that? Why do you think we need to keep looking up? I can't hear you. <laughs> the 
anyway. Our redemption draw it nigh. I'm sorry. Our redemption draw it nigh. Our redemption draws nigh. Amen. And the best is yet to come. Amen. So I'm going to close with that. Uh, with that, uh, Pastor uh, Eric, would you uh, cover us in prayer this evening as we uh, prepare to sign off? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious Lord, we come to you this evening, Father God, just saying thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way and seeing us throughout this day. Father God, we thank you for our, our time together and in, in sharing of the word. And Father God, we thank you for Pastor Baker and bringing such a, a, a wonderful word um, this evening. Father God, be with his family, Father God, and Continue just to bless the Way Fellowship Church, Father God. But Father God, let us uh, remember that we must always operate in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Ghost, Father God. As children of God, we must pick up that bloodstained banner, Father God, and, and we must um, go throughout this earth, Father God, declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord. No matter who we may offend, Father God, we must continue to pick up that same banner, Father God, until we die, Father God. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for this evening, Father God. Father God, we thank you for those who had a heart to get on but was not able. Be with each and every person here uh, this evening, Father God. And Father God, as we leave here but never leave your sight, be with us, Father God, as we sleep tonight. And when we wake up in the morning, let us say hallelujah, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for another day. Father God, we thank you and we love you. And it's in Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. God bless you all. And have a blessed night. Get a beautiful, get a beautiful night of rest. May the Lord be with you. Amen. Good night. Amen. Amen. Is that your baby? Oh, he's so big. Look how cute. You're on mute. We was calling you today for on WhatsApp for the video, but you weren't, you didn't um, pick up. What video? We were calling you on WhatsApp video today.